Hello and welcome back to another video. It is with my greatest pleasure that I can announce that the Prismatoscape plugin has hit the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Woohoo! With all of that out of the way, you probably don't want to hear me rant about the, uh, the process of getting it on there. Let's jump in to the latest Prismatoscape update. So first things first, the entire plugin has been rewritten, uh, or at least the core functionality of the plugin has been rewritten in C++ thanks to good friend Sovereign Dev, Sovereign Dev TM, good friend TM, Sovereign Dev TM. Uh, now, what does this mean for the user? Well, on begin play, on our character, we are going to spawn 200 Prismatoscape deform components for the character. Uh, now keep in mind, these are about 12 capsules in total. So this is like gonna be 2,400 shapes all at once. So with our 2,400 shapes, uh, you can see that the strength is extremely high. So we're like really creating some, uh, some effects here. But you can see that the, the overall FPS is about 70 FPS for me. Um, keep in mind, this is an extremely stressful stress test. But the game thread itself is just chilling. Now, in a future update, I'm going to be doing, if you, if you know anything about hash grids or spatial grids, uh, I'm going to be using a hash grid for the drawing of the inputs, which will essentially decrease the effective input resolution of our interactions. So if we just simulate that here by getting our input resolution and just setting that to, I think 64 by 64 pixels is what we'd end up per hash tile. Then you can see that now, uh, ignoring the obvious low resolution, you know, of the entire input, we can essentially get our GPU and our CPU at about the exact same uh, render time. So that's kind of exciting. Kind of means that we can use this system for things like RTS games without, you know, causing any performance degradation. So you could have like, you know, 400 units on screen, all interacting with foliage and creating wind and, you know, moving them through water would look really dope. Uh, all of that is a possibility on the horizon. So that's very exciting. So another little quality of life addition to the latest update is the Prismatoscape styles. Uh, this is essentially just the, the variables in the simulation that actually matter to the end user. Uh, and they're all just in little little packets. So if I go to my wind style, then you can see that this is how the wind behaves right now. But I can do something like wind curl noise strength and put that up to two. And you can see it instantly changes, um, you know, if, we, if we're already playing. And you can see that, you know, this is what it's doing. It's increasing the intensity of the wind curl noise, which is essentially like turbulence for the wind simulation. Uh, we can do the max travel speed, you know, wind moves faster now. We can do stuff like the wind decay rate, so the wind will, you know, dissipate faster. Uh, and another one is the temporal smoothing. So if there was very fast temporal smoothing, then this is how the wind acted previously. You can see that the, the kind of leading edge of the wind is extremely sharp, which means that you know, for something like this, when the wind hits it, it just like yeets itself in the interaction direction. So using temporal smoothing, we can sort of adjust the softness of the, you know, the, the front or the, the leading edge of the wind. So it essentially kind of blurs it over time, hence temporal smoothing. So there's a bunch of other settings in here that you can play around with. Um, I will be making a video going over what all of the settings do for all of the simulation style profiles, as well as how to set them up and implement them in your project. So if you end up getting the plugin, make sure you look out for that one. It'll be in the documentation playlist. 
And that sort of brings us to yet another included feature in the latest update, which is the Prismatoscape Custom Pivot Painter, which allows us to do stuff like very sort of bonular interactions with plants and stuff. Um, so you can see here I'm interacting with the individual leaves of this plant. And, you know, they all jiggle without detaching from the stem. We can do more complex interactions like, you know, these will bend and get trampled based on their root position sample. But then we can move them around with the rest of our body when they are trampled. Things like ferns, we can interact with the tips of them rather than just at the pivot point. So the Pivot Painter script is custom made to have foliage set up for this plugin specifically. So if, if you're a materials person, the gist of it is that we can sample the interaction textures at the tip of the foliage, you know, the, the, the leaf but then rotate it around its root point. And that's how we get this kind of, you know, spicy interaction. Now, if you want to learn more about how to set up the Pivot Painter and use it and whatnot, there is a video that I've already released in the documentation playlist. So make sure you check that one out. Now, if you want to see how all of these ones here work under the hood, luckily there is now functions that I call easy mode functions. So if we go into this and we just go to the master material, you can see that there is a function called Priz Large Flat Fern WPO. Uh, and if we just go to its folder, we will see that there are a bunch of them. Uh, these are just the ones that I use in my project. So these will just keep getting, you know, th there'll be more and more getting added over time as I you know, do more foliage and stuff, like stuff for like vines on walls and stuff for, you know, character clothing. So you can do like the wind simulation on characters clothing and stuff. So for example, my grass one, you can see all the stuff that it's doing. Uh, it's pretty chill. It does still use the inbuilt, you know, foliage wiggler um, and the foliage bender and all those other functions. But this is just all packaged for my specific grass but if your grass is you know set up to have the vertex color in the r channel and the pivots are using uv coordinate index 2 and all that kind of stuff then it will just straight up work with your meshes all right lastly but not leastly uh the test level just keeps getting updated with more and more material examples uh the latest being just like a dust, a kind of dusty sand, which is just sampling the wind and, you know, creating some, some like little dust things. It's just piggybacking off of the existing simulations. So it doesn't cost any extra. And there's also a material function called like dust thingo, which just gives you this mask, which you can just put on anything. And, you know, if you use it subtly enough, you can basically just add blowing dust on any material. And then one more hotly requested feature is that the water now has a, like a, a downwards uh, height offset uh, or fall off. So, you know, if I jump on here, yeah, we're interacting with the water. If I go under the water, then I stop interacting with it. Uh, and that's gradual as well. So if I'm like right on the edge, there'll be a little bit of a little bit of ripplage. So if your game takes place on the open sea or you've got, you know, enemies or creatures that come out of the water, um, then this will be very spooky. So that's about it for this Prismatoscape update. It is now on the marketplace. Once again, uh, the link will be in the description. So if you're waiting for it to be on the Epic Games Unreal Marketplace store, now you can purchase. As always, if you have any questions or concerns with the plugin and you want to know, you know, is this the right plugin for me? Can it do this? Can it do that? Jump in the Prismatoscape section of the Prismatica Dev Learning Hub Discord, which is always linked in the description. 
uh, and you can just ask any questions there. You can see what other people have made with the plugin. And with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>